Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you a really cool feature coming in .NET 8 for dependency injection in .NET, which in my opinion is one of the three really missing features of DI in .NET, and that is kid services. Now, kid services are not a new concept, they exist in other NuGet packages that do dependency injection for literally tons of years, but we're finally getting it natively in the built-in container, which is the most popular DI container out there. So I'm very happy to see this, and in this video I'm going to show you what it is, how it works, and why I really love it. If you like that content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Domtrain called Getting Started with Solution Architecture, and that course is made by James Eastham. Like I have said in the past, I only want to make courses myself on topics I am an absolute expert on and on this I just am not as good as James so I asked him to come over and author that course for us. James is a senior solution architect for AWS so his knowledge on the subject and his position in the biggest cloud provider in the world makes him the perfect educator for something like this. The course is fantastic, I've taken it myself and I cannot stress enough how good the quality of that course is. I have said it in the past and I will say it again, getting very good in solution architecture and understanding the subject will really elevate you as a software engineer more than becoming better at the code itself because after some point you're gonna plateau but solution architecture doesn't really have a limit and the moment you understand when to choose the right tool for the right job you're going to be way more valuable into your company and your team now to celebrate the launch i want to offer the first 400 of you a 15 percent discount code so you can use the code you see now on your screen and claim a 15 percent discount at checkout trust me this go really really fast so if you want to get the course get it sooner than later now back to the video all right let me show you what i have here so i have a minimal api over here that deals with the weather and i have a single weather endpoint now this is not the built-in weather api I've actually went ahead and I wired up a real service to provide the weather. So I'm using Open Weather Map API, which is sort of a paid service with a free tier, which allows us to provide a city and get the weather for that city. So if I go ahead and I quickly run this API and I go ahead and say, hey, give me the weather for London, then I can do that. And it's 20 point two degrees Celsius and it feels like 19.9, .9, which in my office is a bit higher. As you can see, I'm sweating, but it's fine. <laughs> now, when you have a service that needs to do something like this, where you have the weather, there's a few things you have to take into account. Maybe you don't want to call the real backing API every time to get the weather. You might want to have a cache introduced or you might not want to rely on a single API service, for example, Open Weather Map, because it might go down and then your service has no backup to, well, get the weather. So there's many things you can do and many ways you can take this, but what I'm going to show you in this video to sort of prove the point of why we need that feature is to introduce a backup service where if Open Weather Map is down or we're throttled, then we can fall back to another service. Now, the good thing about how I've implemented this is I have the iWeather service this service over here that returns the weather response I want. And it's an interface where I say, hey, take the city and return the response. And that is it. So the benefit of this is that I can go here and I can say that I want a different service, the weather API service, which is another API that provides the weather. And all I have to specify here is that I want this to also be an iWeather service. Now, I won't bore you with the implementation of this because it doesn't really matter. It's just an API call. So I'm just going to paste it and just show you around. So again, we're calling this api.weatherapi service. We provide the key and so on. We get the weather and we map it. Now here's where this all gets a bit tricky because if you know anything about the built-in dependency injection framework, and by the way, I have a full length course explaining everything, including this when .NET 8 is out. Check a link in the description if you're interested. But here we have the iWeather service and we register it as a singleton. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I go ahead and I say, hey, I want another iWeather service over here, and I'm going to provide the weather API service, the one I just created. If I do that and I don't change my code, I have a bit of an issue. I'm going to go ahead and just run it. Nothing will break. But what is going to happen is that because I'm resolving an individual service over here, the iWeather service, which one do you think is going to be resolved here? Well, the way it works, if you use the add methods, is that the last registered one will be resolved. So if I call this, you see that the weather is 21 because the one service is returning it a bit differently than the other. So the one that's really called over here, as you can see, is the api.weatherapi.com one. 
But what I want is to be able to resolve selectively those services, not just resolve the last one registered. And up until now, what we tend to do in this use case is still register both, but then what this will do is allow us to resolve an I enumerable of the I where the service is, and then you have an enumerable of the services, and then you can use filtering in sort of a link fashion to pick and choose the service you want. So if I was to do that, for example, I could say first over here, and then just resolve it. And if I do that, the Open Weather Map API will be resolved. If I go ahead and I call it, you're gonna see the weather is being resolved. So this will work. But this is a bit of a meh approach in my opinion. What if I still wanna have an iWeather service, but I wanna choose which iWeather service I wanna resolve here? Well, up until .NET 8, there was no way, but now we finally get a concept called keyed services. So instead of doing add singleton, what I can do now in .NET 8 is add keyed singleton scope transient and so on. And if I do that, the registration of the interfaces and the implementation doesn't really change, but now I have to provide an object to identify that service. And this is not just a string, this is an object. So anything can go here and as long as it matches, it will be resolved. If you want to use an integer, if you want to use whatever, it's going to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an alias, a named alias, and I'm going to call it open weather map, for example, for that service. And I'm going to do the same for the other one. I'm going to call that weather API. So what I can do now is I can go here and say from keyed services and I can specify the key. So in this case, I can say open weather map API. So this service now is the open weather map service because I'm selectively resolving it using a key. The key in this case is the name. And if I want to resolve the other keyed service, I can do the same thing. So I can give it another alias. I can say weather map API or weather API over here and say weather API service. And that is it. And now they're going to be resolved individually based on that key. Again, this feature existed in other libraries for years. Now we're finally getting it here as well. Now, because I'm using an RC version of .NET 8 that doesn't have this feature implemented on the minimal API level yet, what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is create two wrappers. However, in the full release, in the full RC1 as well, you will not need to do anything that I'm going to show now. And by the way, this will work in both any type of classes and controllers and minimal APIs. So what I did over here is I just pasted two wrappers that resolve those services, one for the Open Weather Map API and one for the Weather API over here. And I'm resolving the services in the exact same way. So I'm using the keys over here to resolve the services. Then I'll just quickly register them as singleton and then simply resolve them over here. And the same technique actually will be applied here. It's just on the wrapper level. So if I do that now and I stick a breakpoint here, what's going to happen is let's go ahead and call that endpoint and see how they're going to be resolved. So I'm going to say send over here when the API is running. It is running. We're going to hit the endpoint. And as you're going to see here in the hint of rider, open weather map wrapper will resolve, as you can see in here, the open weather map service and the weather API wrapper will resolve the appropriate service. Again, this will not be necessary in the full .NET 8 and RC release, but just to demonstrate the feature here, I had to do it. But you can now use from kid services to resolve it based on the name. This is one of the use cases. There's tons of use cases in this problem. For example, another one would be if you have one that is using a cache and one that doesn't use a cache, or you have the same implementation, but one of them is for internal services that don't require throttling, and one is for external services that do require throttling, and maybe you have a difference in the contract as well. You can do something like this to limit what people can and cannot do. Let's say you don't want to use decoration and you just want to use the straight version to have something like a, a retry policy or not on different implementations, you can do that. There's so many ways you can take this. And in case you're wondering what's the other two features I said that I think the built-in DI container is missing, uh, the first one is native decoration. So you can actually decorate your service if you want to right now. And I do have a video on that and I do cover it in my course as well. And you can do something like that with a new git package called Scrooter, but there's no native approach to simply do that. So I hope we get that at some point. And the other one is registration based on convention, so based on names or types implementation and so on. That would be nice to have, but I don't think we're ever going to get that. Again, this is the feature and I want to know what you think about it, because many people use the lack of this feature as a point to say, hey, you should use something like Autofac or any other libraries because it's not supported in the built-in container. But now that we have it, what are your thoughts on this? I really want to know. Leave a comment down below. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.